We're 252 hectares here. We're a completely closed herd, so we rear all our young stock, including our bulls that we use to run with our heifers. Collars went on our herd three years ago, and I've uh, been really happy with the way they've gone. I like good quality cows. I've always had this attachment that they are individuals and that's been the policy on farm so that's the collars have certainly fitted in with that passion. The collars have allowed us to kind of increase the chances of maintaining them, getting them in calf because we've got details, we know when they're doing the preheats really really easily and just follow through how often they're cycling and any kind of blips in the meantime. We were finding our empty rates were just creeping up and our calving pattern was like we had taken a policy of no interference and we were just getting too many calving in that later September period. The other mitigating factor with it is that both myself and David were stepping back from the shed so we were relying on labour to pick up heats on the cows and I've got quite a personal attachment to these cows so I know, know them reasonably well. It was just a reassurance factor of, of making sure that cows are on heat. So as far as animal health goes, there's the whole herd monitoring, where you can um, monitor the rumination of your whole herd and the pattern throughout the day. The computer program also works out individual cows, so it'll highlight individual cows that have got an issue. And that happens whether it's mastitis or pneumonia or anything. It's also helped because we're all nominated. We use a real range of semen in our mating, getting up to $75 a straw. So you don't want to put that value straw into a heat that is very low, so you can at least choose where you're spending your money. The calving pattern was getting quite spread out. We were starting calving around the 18th, 19th of July. We were still having 120 cows calve uh, after the 1st of September. We were always calving the last of the cows just as we were starting to mate. Once we started with the collars, we started to reduce it down. Last year we had 30 cows calving in September. Uh, we've got half the cows calving by the 2nd of August so we've shifted our mean calving date ahead a week so calving certainly more intense but it's over quicker with the tighter calving pattern our replacements have come in quicker. And the support we got was awesome we had three sessions someone coming on farm going through the different programs that you could use and different ways you could look at things and look up things and, and, and use the information so you weren't bombarded all in one big hit it was a gradual process and you got time to use it and play with it and fiddle with it and, and then come up with questions for the next visit. So that was really great. The old system that we ran was, was tail paint and observing. It was always a, a mission to try and do pre-mating heats, the workload involved with that. The year the collars went on for the first time, it was no tail paint. Absolutely no tail paint at all. It was all observing, it was just go to the screen, there's your bullying cows. This year we started a new employee who was reasonably inexperienced. So really good at doing the milking procedures and everything else, but had very little experience where it came to mating. And so in normal circumstances we would have had to have a farm manager or David in the shed to identify those cows and, and separate that through mating. Uh, he did the first weekend, within 10 days he did a weekend by himself. We told him just put these cows that you see show up in heat, put them in the draft and draft them out and we carried on. So it's really taken the pressure off that management level. It's now easier for management to have time off during mating than it is previously. It's made a huge difference of that pressure off.